presenting the amazing interplanetary adventures of Flash Gordon. Last week, Flash Gordon, Dale Arden, and Dr. Zarkoff escaped from the palace of the Witch Queen Azura and found shelter in the cottage of a herdsman. In the meantime, Saul at the palace discovered their escape and sent searching parties for them. Then he captured Khan and ordered him to become personal slave to Azura. Meanwhile, back at the herdsman's cottage, after a raid on one of the Queen's signal stations for supplies, Flash helped Dr. Zarkoff construct a new invention, an electrical machine which caused the body to disappear and only a shadow to remain. Under its influence, Flash could see everything, hear everything, and speak normally, while only his shadow could be seen. Dr. Zarkoff was delighted and declared Flash Gordon would become the Avenging Shadow. These thrilling adventures come to you as they are pictured each Sunday in the big full-page Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The full-page Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. continue the story. In the blue spark between the two huge electrodes is the shadow of Flash Gordon. Dr. Zarkov stands with his hand on the switch, controlling the electrical current. Both he and Dale Arden keep their eyes fastened on the shadow. You're sure you're all right, Flash? Why, of course I am. Don't look so startled, Dale. You'd look startled, too, if you heard a voice coming from the shadow. <laughs> Dale is right, lad. It is a weird sensation and one which the enemy will soon be given the opportunity to experience. Is Flash going to visit the Witch Queen's palace like this? He certainly is. Good. I'll make them jump through hoops when I go back, Zarkov. Especially that old wizard, Carl. Don't forget how Azora drugged you, Flash. I won't. Don't worry, Dave, darling. I'll make her wish she'd never tried any of her tricks. There. That will do for a while. Why, Dr. Zarkov, you turned off the current, and still we can't see Flash. No. You will not until the charge wears off. Then he will again become visible. Isn't that dangerous? No. He will not feel anything or experience any reaction physically any more than he did when I made him invisible. I don't mean dangerous to him physically. Well, what do you mean, Dale? Well, suppose you should become visible while in the palace of Wicked Azura. I'd have to get out the best way I could, I guess, Dale. Yes. You must be very careful, lad. Make every minute count while you are there. Because you must get back here before the electric charge wears off. I warn you, be very careful. Thanks for the warning, Zarkov. I'll be careful. But, Dr. Zarkov, how will Flash know when the charge is wearing off? Won't he just suddenly appear before the enemy? No. You saw him gradually disappear before your eyes just now? Yes. He will become visible in the same way. Oh. Very faintly at first, then stronger and more clearly as the charge wears off. Oh, I see. No, you don't see. That's the point. You mean you understand. I'm sorry, Flash. I stand corrected. I understand, Dr. Sarkov. Uh, Flash, keep a close watch on your hands. Why? They will tell you when you are becoming visible. Oh. At the first faint appearance of them to your own eyes, leave the Witch Queen's palace at once. I shall follow your instructions, old friend. When shall I start? I am getting hungry. You too must be also. I'm starved. Well, now that you mention it, I am ready for some food. Well, let's go and see what is left in the cottage. Then you can start on your one-man war on the Witch Queen, Flash. I can hardly wait. Hurry, Dr. Zarkov. Hurry, Dale. I'll open the door for you. Oh, Flash, is that really you opening the door? Well, of course it is, Dale. It looks as if it were opening by itself. Give me the creeps to hear your voice and not be able to see you. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but cheer up. I'll be back as soon as I can, and I'll become my natural self again. Do not fear, Dale. Everything will be all right. I hope so. Oh, do be careful, Flash. Don't take any risk. Start back as soon as you can see even the faintest outline of your hand. Don't worry, darling. I'll be all right. Ah, there's some bread and cheese made from the milk of the milk deer. Let me add it. I wish you could see what we see, Flash. Nothing but the jug rising off the table. I see it too, but I can't see my arms or hands. Of course, I was forgetting. Flash, there's a sword over here. You'd better take it to defend yourself. Oh, bring it to me, Dale. I won't need it to defend myself, but it may come in handy to help me get a ray pistol. A Zarkov here will need his to protect you. Here's the sword. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm ready to start now. The peasant's horse is tied outside there. He won't have any use for it now. Uh, take it, Flash. I shall. Dale, if it wouldn't be too creepy, I'd embrace you, but I know how weird it might be. 
So I'll just say goodbye. Goodbye, Flash, darling. Good luck. And hurry back. Good luck, lad. And remember my warning. Goodbye, Zarka, old friend. Take care of Dale. I'm off to win a kingdom in her name. And in the meantime, back in the palace, Tal goes to see Azura. Well, Tal, what brings you here? You know me, Your Majesty. Of course I know you. Why shouldn't I? Then you have recovered. Thanks be to Tal. I have recovered? What are you talking about? Flash Gordon and his companions forced you to swallow some lithium, Your Majesty. Oh. And while you were under its influence, they attempted to take over the city. They did. Bring them before me. I'll make them suffer for that. They are not here, Your Majesty. No. No, Flash Gordon, Zarkov, and the girl have escaped. You let them escape? I will have you punished for this, Tal. Your Majesty, have mercy. It was not my fault they escaped. Why not? I had them besieged at the back of the palace and was melting down their door with a DeSalvo ray gun when they went out the window and climbed down the stout vine to the ground. Well, couldn't you have sent a patrol to meet them at the bottom of the cliff? I did, I did, Your Majesty. But they reached the bottom sooner than we expected. Go on. We have patrols searching every town and village, every house, Your Majesty. They cannot escape our dragnet. Very well. But if they are not found and brought back here, I will have you thrown into a dungeon. The girl is gone, eh? Aye. What am I to do for a personal servant? Ah, I have one for you, Your Majesty. One of the prisoners did not escape. Uh, his name is Khan. He says he is grateful for the opportunity to serve you. Bring him here. I would like to see him. I have already anticipated Your Majesty's wish. He is being held in the hall. A uh, guard... Uh, bring in the prisoner. Uh, here he is, Your Majesty. A uh, prisoner, kneel before your queen. I salute you, most beautiful queen. So you are happy to be in my service, are you? I am grateful for the opportunity to serve you, Queen Azura. I shall be glad to have you serve me, Khan. Carl, why haven't you provided him with the uniform of my household servant? I haven't had time, Your Majesty. I shall attend to it at once. Uh, come, prisoner. I will see that you are fitted out. Wait. Go get the uniform, Tal, then come back for Khan. I should like to get acquainted with him first. As you command, O Queen, I shall carry out your wishes. You are a powerfully built man, Khan. I am no weakling, Queen Azora. I shall feel quite safe with you to protect me. Tell me, why did you not escape with the others? They left without telling me they were going. (laughs) And they deserted you, left you to your fate. They left me to you, Your Majesty. Ah, you have a tongue for pretty speeches, too. I have no such reputation, Your Majesty. If this is your first attempt, you show great promise, Khan. It would be most pleasant having you around. Would Your Majesty like something to drink? Yes, now that you mention it, I am thirsty. I'd like some vodka. See if there's any in that flagon yonder. Gladly, Your Majesty. The flagon is half full, Your Majesty. Here it is. Ah. Hmm... It tastes good. Let me have some. Oh. Oh, what is happening? I. Where am I? Who are you? It worked. I gave her the lithium. Do you not know me, Azora? No. And what did you call me? Azora. That is your name. Azora. I like that name. Listen closely, Azora. You are in great danger. A man named Tal will be here soon. He will pretend to be your friend. He will call you Queen or Your Majesty. He wants you to think you are the queen of this land. Why should he do this? Because he wishes you to think yourself queen and so start trouble while the king is away. The king? Who is the king? King Flash is ruler here, but he happens to be away. I am his friend and yours. Pay no attention to this man, Tal, except to humor him. What is your name? My name is Khan. Here comes Tal now. Remember, humor him. I have the uniform ready, Your Majesty. Well? Uh, will you excuse the prisoner while we put it on him, Your Majesty? Khan is no prisoner. He is my friend. Your friend, Your Majesty? Yes. See that he is treated as such. Uh, begging your pardon, Your Majesty. But are you not hasty in accepting this man as your friend? Remember... You are overly suspicious, Carl. Say no more. Just do as I ask. Very well, Your Majesty. May I retire and leave you in the company of your friend? Most certainly. Go at once. Splendid, Azura. You carried it off well. What shall I do now? Leave everything to me.
Outside the palace walls, three soldiers see a riderless horse approaching. Look, comrade, a runaway horse. No, I'll stop him. But look, what is holding that sword in the air? And the bridle. It's probably held up by a wire. Wait until the horse gets closer, comrade, then stop him. Just as he gets to the soldiers, Flash's horse stumbles and falls. Flash lunges at one of the soldiers. Oh, curses upon us. And drives the sword through him. <laughs> the other two, seeing the sword darting through the air with no hand guiding it and seeing only Flash's shadow on the wall, flee in stark terror. One drops his ray pistol, which Flash picks up. I got his gun. Now for the palace. Back at the herdsman's cottage, Dale and Zarkov anxiously await Flash's return. Oh, Dr. Zarkov, how long will Flash remain invisible? I will tell you the truth, Dale. I do not know. You don't know? And you invented the machine? You must remember this is the first time it has ever been used. This is an experiment. You let Flash serve as your scientific guinea pig. Oh, Dr. Zarkov, how could you treat him so? I know your natural reaction, Dale, but you must not be too harsh in judging me. There is no danger if Flash obeys my instructions to return at the first faint sign of his own hands. He had a speedy horse. He should have reached the palace by now, shouldn't he? Yes, Dale. Then why doesn't he come back? Oh, I just know something's happened to him. Be patient. Let us give him a little longer. The electrical charge was a strong one. It should have lasted this long. You're sure, Dr. Zarkov? Yes. You're not just saying that to make me feel better. I never make excuses, Dale. And I never try to diffuse the truth. As a man of science, I face the facts as they exist, and I give the same facts to others. It is foolish to deceive. That is more cruel than telling the truth. In the end, the truth will come out. I know. I think it's best to face the truth, too. But it's so hard to do nothing but sit here and wait for Flash to come back. Yes, it is. That towel is a magician. He may be clever enough to suspect what has happened. I, too, have thought of that. If he realizes the shadow is Flash, he may shoot him or stab him in the back the way he tried to before. Mm, you have been thinking of that, too? I have been afraid of that myself. It is the only vulnerable spot in Flash's armor of invisibility. Oh, Dr. Zarkov, what do we do? What can we do? There is nothing we can do but wait. In the palace halls, two officers stop one of the fleeing guards. Where are you running, soldier? Oh, sir, I'm running for help. A shadow. Kill my comrade. A shadow? You're drunk. Get back on duty. I'll strip the skin from your back. Stop where you are. Don't move. There it is. The shadow. I'll blow it to pieces. I'll ah. see... <laughs> Before either officer can draw, Flash fires and kills both of them. Then, to a terror-frozen soldier, he says... Drop that gun, fool. You can't kill me. Go and tell us, order that the avenging shadow is coming. Follow the picture version of these thrilling adventures in next Sunday's Comic Weekly, which is distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. You've heard the voices. Now enjoy a real thrill by meeting all the characters face to face in full color action pictures of the adventures to which you have just listened. The Comic Weekly, you know is the big full-page magazine containing the world's greatest collection of humor and adventure. So be sure to get the big full-page Comic Weekly every week with your Hearst Sunday newspaper, and remember our date next week at the same time for another chapter in the amazing interplanetary adventures of Flash Gordon.